I'm EJ Leagi, and along with Yumiko Morita and Kalyan Ung, we created a short sound collage opera called A Little Past Seven O'Clock on September 2nd, about the real-life massacre of Chinese immigrant miners by white immigrant miners in 1885 Rock Springs, Wyoming. We were fortunate also to work with wonderful actors Hao Feng and John Wu, and of course Kalyan, an amazing singer, actor, improviser, as well as the brilliant percussionist Ayun Huang and Arhu player Jazriel Loire. Skylar Kim contributed in multiple ways to the sound world, the editing, and the overall creative trajectory. And we were so thrilled to have animator Sydney St. Clair realize and interpret a visual accompaniment to the work additionally. Yumiko composed a haunting and beautiful six-movement piano score that serves as the foundation of the musical landscape of the work, and most of the melodic and gestural material are direct quotes or improvisations of her score. Hello, my name is Kalyan Ung, and I am the vocalist on this project, and it has been a great joy working with Yumiko and AJ and finding a way to create this piece remotely. I've been in my sound booth that's located in my bedroom uh, for this week, (laughs) recording all of these wonderful melodies, uh, improvising a little, and taking, um, taking things from both Yumiko and AJ and lending my voice to it. And it has been such a wonderful thing to bring light to the story, which I do not think many people in the U.S. know about. Eighteen eighty-five, and a memorial presented to the Chinese consul in New York. The Chinese miners in Rock Springs, Wyoming, described the massacre. So many of the writings about the event, and the few public memorials there are, use the rhetoric of the passive voice, a conflict occurred, there were labor disputes and wage differences, though there were not wage differences, or there was growing tension on both sides. The reality is there are eyewitness accounts from the survivors of the vicious and inhuman massacre presented to the Chinese consul in New York the same year, and attested to by hundreds of the Chinese residents many of whom had immigrated before the white miners. We quote these accounts in the work unflinchingly. What was especially stunning to the victims, and one of the reasons they did not immediately run or fight back, is their attackers, including the wives and children of the white immigrant miners, had been friendly. They had taught them English. They had been neighborly. It's certainly no stretch to see the parallels today of the atrocious and growing anti-Asian hate crimes we're seeing almost daily. But with the rise of anti-Asian hate that's been going on this past year, it makes this story even more relevant and also terrifying that this has been going on for centuries. And finding the ways in which we all individually are bringing ourselves to this project as artists, as collaborators, And I don't think that this piece would have been created in this way had we all not been remote and be asked to work in this way. It actually lent itself to some amazing creativity and um, resourcefulness that we may not have thought of. So it's been a great pleasure working with everyone, and I'm excited for you all to see it. The dead body of Liu Dai Ba was found at the side of the bridge near the creek, shot in the middle of the chest by a bullet breaking the breastbone. I also ascertained that the deceased was 56 years old. The dead body of Chu Ba Kwat was found in the hut adjoining camp number 34, together with the remains of Laura Han Ma. The front part of the body was not injured, but the flesh on the back was completely gone and the bones were scorched. The hair was also burned off. I also ascertained that the deceased was 23 years old and had parents living at home. The above five bodies were found more or less mutilated. A portion of the dead body of Liu Lang was found in a pile of ashes. A portion of the dead body of Liu Lang was found in a pile of ashes. A portion of the dead body of Liu Lang was found in a pile of ashes.